Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Yep, 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 yep. That's what it's called. Only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. My name is Jason Newland and today is my 49th birthday I is 49 today so there you are you can't compete with that can you so yeah 49 so I haven't made a recording since I think th- th- I don't know Friday it's now Monday maybe it was Saturday I don't know but I was just in the toilet just in the bathroom thinking I've got to make a decision because I didn't want I couldn't be bothered to make a recording I kind of couldn't really be bothered a little bit lazy feeling a bit lazy and I thought either I'll make a recording or I'll clean the toilet so here I am that was an easy decision to make very easy Yes, very easy. So, I'm also in the process of transcribing some of my recordings from the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and uh, whatever else it is, panic attacks, that podcast. So I've transcribed a few of those. I found a website that does it. And it's actually does it for free because it's aimed at producing the text for people that are hard of hearing. So it's kind of, it's not charity, I don't think, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's I guess it's a, software computer generated program but it seems to be doing quite a good job I still need to listen to each recording to you know to make the corrections and everything but and that in a sense Although tedious for me, you know, the idea of listening back to anything that I record is not, doesn't really appeal to me. Yet I may learn something from it. I did, I think, was it, when was it? A few, a couple of months back. I was in need of some relaxation and I turned my telly on and I, I think I went to YouTube or something like that or a podcast and I listened to one of my old relaxation sessions from years and years and years ago but it was a long one last uh, like an hour or something and even though the perhaps the quality of the sound wasn't perfect because of the quality, the audio quality is much better now. I realised the the loudness, if that's a I don't know if it's a correct term, but the the volume level of how I speak is quite low. But that's because of how I speak. Um, I'm not I'm not a loud speaker. 
generally. But unless I'm on a bus talking to someone on a phone, then I talk very loudly indeed. But that's all part of the fun. And I, I just... I actually felt relaxed listening to myself. Once I get past the, the annoying whining voice, <laughs> now you will relax. Your fingers are relaxed. Your toes are relaxed. Once I get past the, the, uh, you know, that horrible sound <laughs> that my voice makes. I then I just relaxed. I did. And I did actually fell asleep. And I thought oh, maybe 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 I'm quite good at this. And you may think, well, Juicy JJ, you've been doing this since 2006, and you know it's nearly 14 years. Surely, 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 old man, you should have sort of found out if you were any good before keeping on for so long. Dong, ding dong. And the thing is, the thing, the thing is, listening back to yourself can be a bit weird. Now, I know a lot of people, and I've heard this quite, quite a few times, people say, oh, I didn't realise what I sounded like when they record their voice, like, for the first time. Now, I do know what I sound like. So, my ears are tuned into my voice, and I hear myself exactly the way that the recording picks me up. And I would say exactly the way that you hear me. But then that's not necessarily going to be true because I'm guessing we, if we see things in a different way, we experience tastes differently, um, we feel things differently, as in some people could touch a piece of material and think, Oh, reminds me of home. I'm ever so happy. And another person might think, Oh, no, it's like poo. It, you know, have a different reaction. So I'm guessing, and also you think about it, with music, some people will like love Ed Sheeran. Like love uh, Ed Sheeran or uh, whoever, whatever musical person because I'm realising that people will be listening to this in probably 50, 60 years time and may not know who Ed Sheeran is he had ginger hair I mean, that's not all, not all but he he was pretty much the most famous ginger haired man Um. trying to think if there was any others I mean, you've got Prince Harry he's also got ginger hair so he's worldwide famous uh, Simply Red Peter, is it Peter Hucknall Simon Hucknall Mr Hucknall anyway from Simply Red and he's got red hair, ginger hair. Fergie. 
Princess Fergie, Ferguson, uh, Prince Andrew's uh, wife. She has ginger hair. And Harry has ginger hair. I wonder if Fergie is really secretly the mother of Prince Harry. Mm, see, you didn't see that coming, did you? I wonder what other gingers are there? Like famous gingers. And before anyone thinks that I'm being prejudiced against gingers, I'm really not. I've had quite a few ginger girlfriends and love them. I love ginger hair. Some people, they don't like the word ginger. It's not ginger, it's red. No, it's, it's not red, is it, really? Fiery, fiery, but not red. Red's a different colour. You know, it's kind of the colour of my skin is kind of red. But, especially in the sun. And I come from a ginger family. Gingerish. I've got a... I was talking to the lady in the uh, garage earlier about ginger hair. And she said to me, oh, I went in there like I do, got some milk and a couple of bars of chocolate. Because I enjoy being fat. And she said, oh, your hair's grown quickly, hasn't it? I wanted to say, well, I only saw you yesterday. I think you're being a bit exaggerating there. I think you're... But I said, well, yeah, it does. My hair grows quick. And I was explaining that I had this conversation with a friend and he was saying, no, hair grows the same length for everybody, generally. And I said, yeah, but my hair grows quickly. You don't realise it grows by Christmas and we're nearly at the end of August, so September, October, November, December. So in four months' time, and my hair is pretty short still, I shaved it to the bone about three weeks ago my hair will be curly and long not long as in down to me to me bum I don't want anything to cover my bum up my best feature <laughs> I don't know if it is um, I've never seen it I've no idea what it looks like so it's going to be curly there'll be curls sticking out the side curls at the front and curls at the back guaranteed that's what my hair is going to look like by the end of the year very curly very very curly but and I said to her if you look at my beard because I'm I'm keeping my beard quite trimmed these days. I'm quite into grooming uh, certain parts of my body. I need to stress that I'm all about myself. Um, I like to keep things trimmed. And so my beard, I've got it at a length that's it's quite short. It's still a beard still long enough to be a beard it's not stubble but it's it's short it's a short beard and it's nice and tidy I like a tidy um, m not muff um, what do you call it a, a, a bunch of hair muffle muff rough scruff that'd be scruffy wouldn't it a nice clean Shrabble, no, not shrabble. <laughs> um, um, you know, uh, a bunch of hair. I like it to be nice and tidy for myself, I mean, on my own face. See, if I've got hair on my face, something that's hairy on my face, I like it to, it to be tidy. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a preference. And and I said to the lady behind the counter at the garage, 
and she, I said, "We well, see my beard. See there's like grey bits. And she said, she said, yeah, but I've, I think what she wanted to say is you don't need to poke at them. They're very evident to everyone who can see you. But she didn't say that, so that's nice. And I said to her, well, I used to have ginger. I used to have a ginger beard. Mixed in with brown hair. So I had brown hair and ginger hair in my beard, as well as ginger hair at the front of my my hair hair the, on my head. And I also had ginger pubes. So I had, I've definitely kind of inherited the ginger gene from the family. Um, because my nan's brother was ginger I never saw him being ginger because he was I think he was bald by the time I kind of met, met him and he was elderly but he was ginger when he was young and two of my cousins uh, one distant cousin and one very close cousin so one cousin who's my my auntie's um, yeah who's my dad's sister's daughter's daughter that makes sense so it'd be my my auntie's granddaughter She's ginger, like proper ginger. And my grandmother's sister's daughter's grandchild. So that makes sense, doesn't it? So my, my grand, grandmother's sister, she had a daughter and uh, I, I was got quite close to her and her family for a while and her daughter had a girl who's ginger so the ginger gene has passed through the family so there could be if I had a kid and I don't and I I don't I don't know if it's possible anymore I mean everything still works you know I just <sighs> really I suppose it's kind of like I've got an old car you know when you've got an old car in the in the garage you know sort of in your house and you've got an old car it's like a bit of an antique which that's some you know parts of me are kind of antiques now but you love the car. You like looking at it. You like to clean it and rub it. You know, make sure it's nice and shiny. And occasionally I like to start it up and just test it to see if it's still, you know, working order, still running. So, you know, everything's still in working order. As of 20 minutes ago, no. Uh, everything's still in working order. But that'd be weird. Imagine having a kid at my age, 49. So even if we kind of got down to it right now. Was it now? August. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So May next year would be when the my girlfriend or wife or whatever would pop it out and well girlfriend because I wouldn't be married by well I suppose I could be married by then it's uh, I quite like the idea of running off and getting married in Las Vegas or Gretna Green you know just somewhere where there's no one else around 
just no big party or people watching just let's get married man yeah man should we do it yeah and just let's run let's see what time see how much the trains are yeah can't afford to buy you a ring though oh should we wait until you we, you can afford the ring yeah I suppose I don't know do we need a ring it's so conventional we don't need rings what do we need rings for we don't need rings to prove our love eh, 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 eh. but then May and then by what's it May, June, July, August so I'll be 50 in the August so basically I'll be 50 years old when the child is one years old so when it's 11 I'll be 60 when it's 21 I'll be 70 that's not that bad really is it when he or she's 31 I'll be 80 when they're 41 I'll be 90 so they'll have like 40 or 50 years with me that's not so, it's not so bad is it really it's doable I suppose yeah. Ah, oh, interesting. So, yeah, I, just the point was I could have a ginger child. That was the, the main point of that. And I've dated a few ginger girls since I was, well, since I've been alive. I dated a ginger girl at school. I dated a ginger girl when I was 17 or 18 no 18 I dated a ginger girl well, I, had, I say dated um, I was involved in a ginger girl when I was 20 I was involved in a ginger girl when I was 25 That's four. How many other ginger girls have I been with? Or been involved with? Um, I can't think. Oh, yeah, it's the lady I married. No, I haven't been, not been married. Well, other, I'm sure I've been with other ginger girls. I probably have, I've just forgotten. But it's there's been... I dated a girl that was kind of ginger but it was, it was more kind of a bit mixed a bit kind of gingerish hair if you know what I mean more not like bright ginger you she, she you know it wasn't the kind she didn't have the kind of hair that you could ride down a dark alley a dark road without on your bike without lights and people would still see you no it was kind of more toned down a bit but it was definitely gingerish what other gingers so that's five oh I fancied some ginger girls as well there's this uh, when I worked in insurance the first job I had in insurance there was this ginger girl oh man wowsy powsy I really liked her she was my friend as well so I got on really well with her um, and then when I was counselling there was a a ginger lady that I met and 
Had a cuddle with her, but nothing else. She was, uh, I don't know if she was a social worker or something, I'm not sure. But she was, uh, this party that was being held. And... What other ginger girl? <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting stuck on this now. Was I don't know, always had a thing for ginger girls. I just, I just like them. I like anyone that's nice to me, really. There was this one ginger girl that uh, she used to be a waitress at a place that I was at, and she was she wasn't ginger, but she was she was ginger, but again not not bright ginger, but uh, she liked me, but I was I think that put me off, not put me off her, but put me. I didn't feel very confident because she liked me. I always seemed to feel confident when when I had to put a bit of effort in. And and she yeah, she liked me but I didn't not take advantage is not the right word, but I didn't take advantage of the opportunity to spend time with her. And I do wonder about that because I think oh, maybe maybe we'd still be together now. But then I think back, you know, I think, oh, all the stuff that I've kind of been through, or not not done, but, you know, with the various kind of illness and mental health stuff, and that would have been really difficult, I'm guessing, for a partner to have dealt with it you know to have put up with it because there was times when I just had to be really selfish and put myself before anyone else which is a lot easier when you haven't got anybody relying on you so I was kind of lucky not to have uh, anyone that depended on me from that angle I guess I'm gonna move I'm gonna move away from gingers. Just So I've got that ginger gene. So I could very easily have a child that was ginger. And I don't know how easy the adoption process is. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I don't, people get, does anyone care about hair colour anymore? I don't know, I don't personally. I quite like Swedish, the Swedish look. It's quite weird because I like the Swedish look, which is like really fair skinned. Like proper, not see through, but just ghost, ghosty kind of, you know, really, really fair and like blonde hair, like naturally blonde hair, maybe blue eyes. But then I also like, um, I don't know, any, anyone really. I like, Spanish or dark skinned girl women so it's it's not like I'm just like one thing I'm kind of and it's not through not being able to be fussy because I'm really fussy I'm way too fussy for my own looks I really am I could have a girlfriend right now if I wasn't fussy 
but I just I am I'm really really fussy about what I want and of course personality is the most important thing unfortunately unfortunately I live in Essex and I've not met many people that I like <laughs> I'm kidding about the Essex bit and um, it's yeah it's I think what I learned years ago when I was doing some DJ work when I worked in clubs and stuff I learned that because I had an inflow of females coming into the club every single night it was no longer a a novelty and it felt nice to be able to uh, turn away someone that was horrible like you know that was verbally horrible and be able to just turn them all you know say nice you know move on and not get involved and interact with them instead of being desperate and kind of like thinking well it doesn't matter I'll I'll make you know I'll I'll put up with anything if it means I get to hold hands <laughs> and those kind of experiences sort of change I think they change you and part of me would love to be back doing that and having I mean you know I was meeting women quite regularly and I was quite confident more confident than I've ever been before or since with ladies but part of that confidence came from not being desperate from not needing anything from them because I knew that the next night or the next weekend the club would be full of women again it was men as well it wasn't just there was men there also but it was always you know it wasn't just like this is your one opportunity to fall in love and be with that one person and to have to settle with somebody that you might really find attractive but had a personality of a I don't know what kind of animals got just a horrible personality. I don't know. I had this woman years once. Once she actually came in, and she said to me, uh, "It's on the door." She said, "I booked a table for six people or ten people, and only six are coming." And I said, "Well." You, you booked it we have to take the 10 seats so you've got to pay for the 10 if we manage to sell the 4 seats then you'll get your money back you know but we, we're sold out we've been turning people away all day and she said and she started really being rude to me like proper raising her voice and uh kind of in that that zone of do you know who I am I said yeah your name's Tracy it's on the list you just told me who you are and she said oh I want to speak to Jason I want to speak to Jason he's the person I spoke to on the phone and I said um I said oh no I'm afraid that's all we can't do nothing there she kept going on and on and on in the end I said I'm Jason I'm the person you spoke to because she was lying to me she was telling me that I said stuff to her that I didn't she's saying you know and I used to go in on a Saturday afternoon 
and I'd take the orders at that time I was getting the the tables organized for the club but I wasn't I wasn't very good at it really but um you know I'd take I'd answer the phone for a few hours in the afternoon just for any last orders and stuff and she and she's blatantly lying to me saying that I said all this stuff and in the end I said I'm Jason and then later on in the evening she was embarrassed and she walked away I said later on later on in the evening she came up to me she said are you going to dance because on the phone we were getting on really well and she was flirting with me on the phone and I think I was probably flirting with her I was sort of I don't know if I was blowing kisses probably not because that's not professional but I was you know she, we were getting on very well like humans very human communicative you know communication and uh when it came to the disco part she said it was after the the comedy had finished. She said, "Is she going to dance to me?" I said, "No, no." And she stopped. and said, "What? Are you sure?" Like really, after all that horrible stuff she said to me, she thought I was still going to want to dance with her. Of course not. And I realised then. I'd become too fussy I put personalities above looks and it was okay then but as I got older kind of got a I don't know if things change Head of the worst places to meet anyone is it like a religious place I went to the Buddhist centre To I was really into Buddhism for years and years and years and there was so much um, vagueness with the communication between the men and the women as in I had n- I had not a clue if a woman liked me or not. Zero clue. Because it was all, let's do coffee, let's do lunch. The men were meeting up with each other, the women were meeting up with each other, the men were meeting up with the women, the women were meeting up with the men, and everyone else was meeting up with each other as well. And I never knew. But yet we could never I could never ask anyone out because that would be classed as being creepy <laughs> it's, that would be classed as being you know in the, in the actual the center it can't it can't be dating people or it can't be we don't want people coming here just to meet women which would I wouldn't travel anywhere to meet women to meet anyone I'm too lazy for that I don't think I'd even travel to the yeah I don't think I'd, I'd even wouldn't even travel to the other side of town I don't think to date someone that's why it's a bit difficult because I need to have a girlfriend that's on this road but there is no one here there's no women here so it's a bit of a shame. <laughs> but um I've got no idea what the point of all this is. I think I'm going through a midlife crisis. Possibly. Because the last couple of days I've just been <laughs> sitting here. Asleep pretty much. Like with very, very minimum mental activity whatsoever. It's just like, uh, just, uh, 
zero of anything and that was yesterday and today so the day before and Saturday a bit as well to be honest it's like uh, 49 and I just think uh, so what now I'm trying to think of ways of making something for my life, making a a life. And this part of me thinks, oh, it's too late. You're 49. So you can't start now. But then I won't, I won't be starting anything, you know, it's... It's a continuation, isn't it? Yet, perhaps moving in a different direction. And I just think, what can I do? Because after complaints and moaning and reviews online on iTunes saying that they, people didn't like the adverts on my podcasts I've taken the, the adverts off so there's no way of uh, financing anything financing the, the cost of running this free service the podcast costs what £30 a month which isn't like a huge amount, but it is going to go up when the when I reach a certain level of hours. So I've got I think one thousand three hundred hours used out of one thousand five hundred, and then it's going to go up to probably fifty fifty pound a month to increase the hours that I can use. I think it puts it up to something like 3,000 or something. And uh, I've been trying to think how can I how can I do something make a living doing what I'm doing rather than going and getting a job in a like you know, minimum wage job somewhere when I'm capable of doing this not this not you know, me just talk about nothing but you know the hypnosis -y stuff why it makes sense to find a way to earn a living doing this which is what I enjoy doing and what I'm passionate about the thing that gets me out of bed and I think that keeps me keeps me out of bed you know as far as staying up late enough to make these recordings at night I don't know. Been trying to think, and I haven't come up with anything yet. I thought, should I make everything so it, you know you have to pay for it? Which is what I've been told by other people for years to do. So that would involve getting rid of all the podcasts and just having my one website. And it's already built for this. It's already I've I've deleted the website, but um, basically I can restart it at any time. It just means paying the money, which is another thirty-two pound or something a month. 
and then selling each recording I have for one dollar. But then where are the where's the audience gonna come from? Because the audience my audience comes from the podcasts from iTunes, from Spotify, Stitcher, and just loads of different places. Lots of different places that have my podcasts on. And there's websites that actually are promoting my podcasts. And I'm even in the, the charts and so on some podcast hosts some podcast like charts and stuff um, so if I get rid of the podcasts then it's kind of like I just disappear and yeah I know that I'll get some people will come to the website and they will download some episodes what would I prefer to have a few people a day downloading a podcast or thousands of people a day downloading and I know the answer to that so It's just, it's a difficult one because it's a free service and I want it to be free and I want it to always be free. And it's supposed to be free. And that's, it's not the best part of it, I hope. I hope it's not the best, <laughs> the best uh, thing about the podcasts, the popular ones I've got. It's free, so let's just listen to this garbage for a half an hour. It's free, yay! But hopefully it's useful stuff. The you know, the sleepy stuff and etc. So So then what what does that leave me with? As far as ways to earn a living. So I thought I could write a book. And it's not the first time. First? First. It's not the first time that I thought about writing a book. I've been thinking about this for many, many years. And I've started to write a few times. Well, I think with these recordings, I'm not a perfectionist because I can always improve it next time. I kind of there's that um, that sense, especially with the because with a podcast, with a podcast, if it's I'm doing another recording tomorrow or the day after. You know, I think I'll be forgiven if it if one of them's maybe not quite doesn't quite hit the spot. Then maybe the next one will. The last one was really good, the one before that was really good. You know, maybe that one was didn't quite do it, but the next one. But with a book it's never gonna be ready. It's never gonna be It's, I just, it will never be ready it will never be completed in order to publish because it won't be uh, I'm never going to be happy with it and I know that so what do I do how do I do that then because I'm not a perfectionist generally but I'm a big fan of books I've read a lot of books and 
I would want to produce a book that I would enjoy reading. And I don't know if I have the ability to do that because the way I write will be the way that I speak. And I'm not sure that that's really the right way to write a book. I don't know if that will be uh, a particularly easy read. And I've got a few things I'd like to write about. I'd like to write about my life from childhood onwards and just talk about some of the things that happened and and cover you know the mental illness uh, my love for ginger girls <laughs> no um, you know just general things what the things that have happened during my 49 years I'd like to write a book about the free hypnosis service that I do and how it came about and the pitfalls and the things that people have said to me and you know but that would be a, a, a shorter book but just then go into what I did and how I did it and why I did what I did I'd like to write a book on anxiety and panic attacks, which would be a, a mirror to the podcast I do, where I will talk about my experiences, plus what I did to help myself plus ideas I have that may be useful to the reader I'd like to write a book on chronic pain some of the ideas that I've come up with over the years just some techniques that might be useful but then I haven't I haven't given the chronic pain sessions as much energy as I'd like to because I don't get many listens and I'm not going to keep making recordings if no one listens to them I mean some of my recordings uh, podcast I'd say Hypnotic Buffet some of the best some of it's some of the best stuff that I've done. I'm talking you know, about ideas that are coming up and just thoughts and theories and ideas about stuff. No one listens to it. It doesn't hardly get any, any uh, listens at all. Which is why I don't make any more of them. So it's kind of one of those... They used to, they used to when I first started, especially on YouTube, I used to put the videos on YouTube and they used to get quite a few views, a few views, a few views. So I've got a, I've got a couple of ideas I perhaps would like to maybe do a course or courses that are accompanied by a book. And although I could do an ebook, and ebooks are relatively easy to do and cheaper to produce than actual books and publishing an actual live something you can hold in your hand book. I'd like to offer both because the idea of having an actual book that I've written, that I've published, 
that I can hold up and just touch and look at is I don't know be it would be a dream come true as long as it's decent I don't want to publish a pile of crap you know I, I want it to be <laughs> like really useful and to the reader that's what I'd like so transcribing recordings that I've made could possibly give me some material which I could put together to make a book and kind of go from there possibly yeah so that's what kind of what I'm thinking about but there's no quick solution there's no I don't even know if people do people buy books anymore would anyone want to buy a book from me if I wrote a book yeah I'd like to do I'd like to write a comedy I think I think I need I might need someone to bounce off of when it came to something like that I mean, in some ways, when I talk, when I do these, these recordings, I almost feel like I'm bouncing off of you, even though we well, wouldn't want me bouncing off of you because of my big bouncy belly, big, <laughs> big bouncy belly, and It does feel a little bit like I'm, I'm tossing. Uh, got a tennis ball. I'm tossing it off over to you, and then you're kind of you're tossing one off to me, and we're kind of you know chucking the ball to each other, so sort of bouncing it off of each other. It's kind of. Yeah, it kind of feels a little bit like that. So I reckon, hmm. I thought about calling my book about myself, uh, The Life of a Bipolar Hypnotist, after my um, blog that I used to have. I used to do a podcast as well and make videos, just talking about my life. But I stopped doing that years ago. So yeah, we'll see. See what happens. If you've got any suggestions, then let me know. Um, thank you for birthday wishes for those of you that have sent birthday wishes to me. I should have said that at the beginning, shouldn't I? 49 years old today. Or yesterday, when you start listening to this, because it was Monday, the 26th of August. So you might now be in Tuesday or Saturday, if you're listening to this, in, on Saturday. So, um, and also, if you want to, if you want to, you can subscribe or like the is it subscribe or like or whatever the um, podcast which means you can be notified when there's a new one coming so I'm going to go thank you for listening to me he 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 and I will see you again very soon ooh, ooh, ooh. and remember 
to be kind to yourself. Lots of love.